All right, so today we're going to talk about the obedience of faith. Um, I'm just going to jump into it here. We'll see how far we get. This is Romans chapter 1, uh, 4 through 6. This is where Paul talks about the obedience of faith. And basically what we're going to cover here in the next few minutes is uh, in, in counter uh, also is the idea that um, you know that we are <laughs> there's so many traditions out there I'm trying, having a hard time deciding which one to land on um, that we are saved uh, for the purpose of that we could go to heaven right if we die you will go to heaven and that's the purpose of your salvation that's the purpose of Jesus that's not the purpose of Jesus that's not the purpose of, of salvation that's not the purpose of the kingdom but this kind of worldview and this kind of Christian worldview and this kind of gospel view has uh, caused the body of Christ to shirk its mission and responsibility or to um, narrow it down to something that's way less effective than it should be. So when Paul's talking about the obedience of faith, essentially what we're talking about here is we're talking about when you are reborn by the Spirit, your sins are canceled, and you're given a new nature, and you receive God the Spirit as an inheritance, as a son, you, you weren't saved for yourself. You weren't just God was just so heartbroken that you were lost in sin and darkness, so he sacrificed Jesus so that you could have a life. That's not the purpose. He bought you for his purpose. He bought you with the sacrifice of Jesus. The Bible declares that we have been bought with a price, purchased with a price, and you no longer belong to yourself. So anyone, any Christian or anyone who claims to know Jesus, no longer can live with the mindset that they belong to themselves. That's out of bounds. That's illegal. That's playing, that's competing in a game that and, and ignoring the rules. And no one wins a game that way. No one plays well that way. And Paul makes all these references in the New Testament. So let's read Romans 1, uh, verse 4 through 6. And was declared, Jesus was declared to be the Son of God in power. And whenever Paul writes, he always adds in power. So this is not just about reading some words. This is about real living power available to do the job. He was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Everything that Jesus, that God did through Christ, revolves around resurrection from the dead. In fact, there's a day coming uh, at, uh, that there will be two resurrections, the first one to life, the second one to judgment. The first resurrection is the one you want to be a part of because that is a resurrection of the saints. And there are going to be saints all over the planet resurrected the bodies that were put in the ground or the ashes that were sprinkled in the ocean those ashes and those bodies are going to come together and they're going to be transformed into an immortal glorified body that's indestructible the bible says a body just like his so that's our hope of that's the hope of our salvation that we would receive this glorified body and step into the fullness of the kingdom of god on the earth uh as soon as the nations are discipled and all of his enemies are put under his feet. All right, back to this. So, uh, according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace. And see how this stuff's always past tense, have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the, for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying, hey, we are bringing about in the nations obedience of faith for the sake of his name, not only to the nations, but including you who are called to belong to Christ Jesus. So this obedience of faith is uh, Paul's way of beginning this conversation with the Romans, which is in the very first few verses of the book here, um, talking to them about the responsibility in the earth as a son of God. And, in, and it's a tremendously powerful book. And even going into Romans chapter 8, uh, where it talks about that all creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God because uh, we are the ones that have been tasked with setting it free. 
See, even creation was put in chains when through the sin of one man, death entered the world through the original first Adam. And now we have the situation where we have been restored in the dominion that was lost in the garden to the devil by the disobedience of that first Adam. But now Jesus, the last Adam, has taken back this dominion and seated us far above the one who had the dominion, which is the devil and his kingdom. And we are now ruling with Christ in heavenly places from the earth. Now, that's crazy, isn't it? That's like different kind of talk. But that's the reality and the power that of what it means to be a son of God. All right. So this word obedience, let's just first of all take a quick look uh, at the word obedience here. This is Greek word 5218. You can get a a uh, handy little uh, app on your phone, a, a Greek concordance for free. <clears throat> There's a few out there available. If you like to do this stuff, I'd recommend kind of checking these words out for yourself. Uh, Greek word 5218, uh, obedience. It means compliance or submission. Attentive hearkening, compliance or submission. Compliance or submission. So, when we talk about faith or coming, you know, being someone who believes, who is walking the faith walk, we should say, this is more than just faith for God to help me through this problem or, or faith for God to help me pay this bill or faith to help me heal the sick or to walk in divine health. If you are born again, you have been given a measure of faith. And with that faith comes the requirement of obedience. And I was, I was talking about some of these things with somebody one time when we were out uh, doing uh, door-to-door uh, outreach and healing the sick. And uh, I, was trying, I was trying to explain to this man uh, what else was available to him. He was a believer, but he's been taught you know, that you, know, you, you just pray a prayer and that's basically it. And, you know, hopefully go to church. <laughs> and uh, I was explaining him some of these wonderful things that God has done for us in Christ that already are his. And he said, uh, but I don't need that to be saved. He said, I don't need to do that to be saved. And, um, and that's where most people are at. And that's what the gospel that's been taught is that you don't, it's just over and over. You don't have to do works to be saved. And he thought I was trying to tell him, Hey, you're not saved unless you do this. And that doesn't have anything to do with this. See, when you are born again as a son, you inherit responsibility. You inherit the calling of a son. It's kind of like um, how the you know everybody's got their eyes on um, England and the the Queen has just died, and um, they are looking at the royal family and talking all about that. So it's kind of a good example. So uh, you have the the Queen of England, and she has family under him and heirs to the throne, and those heirs have to behave as an heir, right? They have to just, be, you know, they are born in the family and that means they are an heir to the throne, okay? And they didn't have to do work to be an heir. You know, they're not going to receive the throne if they don't check every single box. But at the same time, they have a responsibility to the throne because they are an heir. So it's kind of like that here. We have an, a responsibility to the obedience, this is what the Bible says, to, ho- to whom much is given, much is required. There is much required as a son of God. There is much required as an inheritor of God the Spirit dwelling in you. This is not about God getting, you know, canceling sin and, and bringing in, you into this relationship so that you can live for yourself. That That's not how this works. And you're going to receive uh, some stiff um, a discipline along the way if you try to live like that, some stiff discipline from the Lord. But this is about uh, maturing as sons and recognizing that there is an obedience required to faith. There is an obedience required to being a son.